Well, good evening, Gary. It's um, it's not very often I actually get the the chance to to draw breath, do a bit of a, a pre-match interview. But I think you know we we we'll take this opportunity to to just kind of talk about you know it's been a really busy week. We've had yeah. three games in seven days. If you looked at November overall, there's probably been at least six games. But you know, first and foremost, I suppose, and the thing that's most current, um, you've navigated City to the the fourth round of the Scottish Cup, drawn Aberdeen away. What's your thoughts to that? Yeah, there's always a chance. I remember got to get one of my one of my old teams or, or a club that I've got some sort of relationship with. So, yeah. listen, it'll be a, when we get to it, when we eventually get to it, you know, it'll be a, it's a great game for us. You know, you're playing against one of the biggest teams in Scotland. Um, I think it'll be their first game back for their three week break. So, you know, you're hoping that that can sort of go against them, but it's got to be extremely difficult for us. But it's good, you know, it's a reward for the players. You know, you're getting through this couple of rounds, it lets them. Um, Pick their wits, test themselves against some of the best players in the country, um, and I'm sure it's a, an occasion that everybody associated with Edinburgh City will enjoy when we eventually get to that. But for me, you know, I think I don't know what we've got six, seven league games before that. So obviously my focus is, is on those games. But it's uh, not it's a. I think you know you can maybe get a game where you maybe get a team for a higher division that you maybe only got a thousand or fifteen hundred and. It's not the crowd that, that you would talk that Ed, the the board and that would want to get money in and stuff like that. You know, there's going to even though for Aberdeen fans, people thinking oh, it's only Aberdeen against Edinburgh City. Aberdeen, so well supported club. You know, I'd still be expecting there to be seven, eight, nine thousand people there. So it might be so for a lot of our players, it could be the biggest crowd that they've played in front of. We've got yeah. quite a young team, you know. So loads for us to look forward to when that game actually comes. Yeah, looking at previous stats when Aberdeen have played our. Uh, you know, a League Two side at Stenhouse Muir a couple of years ago, and there was ten thousand attendance, and Stenhouse Muir taking them back down the road for a draw. Um, but like you say, you, you know, it, it's now focusing players on on the job in hand, and that's you know the bread and butter. It's league business. It's the boring stuff, I know. But you know, rather than the glamour of the cup tie, it's got to be difficult. No, it is. Listen, and that's where we're. You know, and it starts with Anand on Friday, a team that I've done. Um, Peter, he, he always, you know, for for them. Northern, one of the biggest budgets in the league, they always seem to get a really good team on the pitch. They're well organised, they know what they're doing. They've got some really good players at, for this level. And it's going to be a difficult game, actually, if we look at the stats tonight. And I think the, they've got the second best away record in the league so far this season. So, you know, that in itself tells you how difficult a game it's going to be. So, um, we'll treat them with the respect they deserve. I like Peter, I like, you know, I like how he gets his teams organised. We won, I think it was 3 1 down there, but. You know, I think Brian made a few good saves that day, they missed a couple of chances, the game could easily have went the other way. So uh, we know it's going to be a difficult game, but we also know that if we if we do the hard work and, and, and do what we've been doing recently, then we've got a chance to open up three points on, on Annan and that's what we've got to aim to try and do. And for you personally, I guess it, it wouldn't be in but a city if it wasn't a roller coaster. Um, you know, and obviously, first of all, congratulations to Stevie Crawford in, in yeah. securing the managerial role at East Fife. For you, you're, you know, you're, you're losing a, an able assistant manager there. Listen, it just seems to be one of these seasons this year for us. You know, I think a lot of clubs are the same, but I can only speak about us. You know, the the, the, the we've we're, we've had to replace the physio twice for the end of last season. New sports scientist Grant left a couple of days before pre-season started. Took a little bit of time, but we eventually got Stevie in. Now Stevie's moved on, so the backroom staffs continuously had to be um, changed, which isn't the ideal, you know. But it happens. But it's not ideal for the players. It's not ideal for me to try and build up relationships with people. Them knowing how I work, me knowing how they work. Um, but with Stevie, with Stevie's situation, you know, it's uh, when I approached Stevie about coming in, you know, I thought I'll, I'll ask him. I thought maybe just he maybe just needed a break. He needed to get his enthusiasm back. I tried to restrict. All the stuff that accompanies a coach and a manager off the field and just let them focus on enjoying the training part of it. And uh, I think he done that. You know, he came in and as Stevie is, the more he was here, the more he wanted to do. But we always had a gentleman's agreement that he, he would never go behind our back. But if there was ever anything that came up that, that appealed to him that he would like to try and go for, that he would tell us. And we always had the agreement as a club that we wouldn't stand in his way. And that's what's happened. You know, so we wish him well. Um, Great club, East Fife, you know, I had a lot of happy times there myself, they've got good people. For me, they're at the wrong end of the table, you know, so I hope Stevie goes in and makes an immediate impact and, and lifts them up. Yeah, and and I guess, you know, we, we, 
you tend to be front and centre in, in terms of the you know the interviews, whether it be pre or, or post match. But maybe now's the time just to kind of you know go through your backroom staff and actually you know you you're surrounded with some real quality people. No, we have you know, and it's took us a little bit of time to get there you know, but we've got a uh, uh, Andrew Somerville does the um, sports scientist really top drawer. Um, he works with the um, he's worked at senior clubs before. He's working at Heriot Watt just now. So he's fantastic, you know, he's been a really, really good addition. Uh, we've managed, Tony's came in, Tony's worked at senior clubs as well, he's working with the Scottish Rugby just now as well, Tony's came in as the physio. Scott's came back and helped out a little bit as well for the last season, Scott comes in the Wednesday and helps us out because now we've got a, an unbelievable amount of injuries, you know, this season I've never seen anything like it and it's a credit to the players that have actually got themselves into the league position that we're in with the amount of injuries we've had, you know, you know yourself over yeah. the last seven, eight, nine games. I think we've maybe had, on average, seven or eight injuries. The yeah. key players as well, big players, you know, players that I kept for last season, Callum Crane, Danny Jardin, Lee Hamilton, Robbie McIntyre, people that I wanted to keep and try and build the team around um, and, and, and help the new players sort of integrate into the team, into the club, and they've been missing for a large chunk. So for us to be sitting there, listen, there's still things we can do better, of course we can, but I think we all can, things considered with injuries that we've had, the backroom changes, you know, um, the players deserve a wee bit of credit for, for getting through the fourth round of the cup and sitting in the playoff positions. And yes, we'd like to be higher, but you know, there has been circumstances that have affected that. So we've got the aim, I've got Alec Conan who's been with me since I came in, you know, I've worked with previous clubs, really good goalie coach, uh, well thought of with the SFA and stuff like that. And we've also got one that people will know, we've got Liam Burns and Liam's a young coach, up and coming coach. Um, he's got his own coaching business, people spoke very highly of him. Uh, and we asked him just to come in and just to monitor training really and get to know me and Stevie and then as things have went on he started taking more and more of the training helping out Stevie so you know he's uh, he's just finding his feet really it's his first club really at senior level but there's no doubt he's a very very good coach you know I trust him to take some of the sessions yeah um, so I think where everybody's had a panic with Stevie moving that I was just got to be doing everything myself it's not the case just now you know I've got Liam there to help me and it'll be me and Liam and Eck for Friday and then I'll have a sit down and think about what we're going to do moving forward. You know, there's, uh, I've already had a couple of people get in touch with me asking if I need an assistant manager. I think that's more through that they didn't know that I already had Liam here at the club helping. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have a think about what we're going to do. Obviously I'd be more of a panic if I was just sitting here myself. Yeah. But you know, I've got Liam and, he, and he worked, he's been working away and he knows how I want to work. So we'll take the training between us tonight and uh, me, Liam and Eck will be, be in the dugout on Friday and then we'll have a think, speak to the board and see what we're thinking about um, bringing in another coach or another assistant manager moving forward. And of course there's a... Uh, well wait, I better, I better mention somebody else in my backroom staff. <laughs> well, I'm sitting over there with a flat cap scowling at me and of course I've got Ian McIntyre, the cat, the kit man, who... Um, keeps pestering me to get him a bigger van but I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get players first before I get him a bigger van so we'll have to do things in order. we got a sponsor for the van and that's, that's what we can do. No, get. I can just see him sitting there so I better give him a mention. Um, have I forgot anybody now? Oh, you I have, forgot you have. Aye, you have. Uh, Jamie. You've got Jamie. I, forgot, I can't believe I've forgot. You. Jamie, I've been, on the, I've been on the phone to him all day today helping me with the, with the pre-match presentation for the players because again that was something that Stevie would do once he got in the door. I would tell him what we sort of wanted, and Stevie would help me put it together and stuff. So it was something that took a job away from me there. You know, I would tell them what I wanted, but Stevie sort of put it together. So I've been back and forth with the Jamie today um, about getting that ready for the players and stuff, just to keep the players in their normal routine. So I didn't want anything to change with Stevie leaving. I didn't want nothing to disrupt the players' routine. So. On the video platform that they use, Huddle, you know, Jamie will put up the pre-match analysis of Annan for the players tomorrow and they all log on to that and watch it. It just keeps your team talk on a Friday a wee bit shorter, you don't need to go into it in as much detail, you can just touch on what you've already showed them in the video, so, you know, Jamie's been a big help to me really, he's, uh, he's different class really, I've worked with him at all my clubs really. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, he's been with you through the, uh, the, the thick, the thin and, and the good and the bad and you know, as Edinburgh City, we've actually been really fortunate to have him, you know, occasionally, uh, when, you know, through, through Gary Jardin and, and no, James right. being there. And I think what's happened is I had him at East Fife and, and East Fife wanted to keep him when I left. Yeah. And I took him to Queen of the South 
and uh, he wasn't too happy with how they treated me so he walked away showing a bit of loyalty for Queen of the South yeah. and uh, he was already at Edinburgh with Gary so for me coming in and him already here it wasn't somebody that I had to appoint he was already at the club so uh, no listen he's, uh, he's a tradesman but he's uh, he's turned into a f- basically a full time business now you know he's got rugby teams he looks after football teams and they all give him a wee bit here and there and he's really good at his job and, and you know I, I can honestly say that He's as important to me as any member of my any member of my backroom staff, just because of the amount of time that's me and him getting video footage and mm-hmm. putting stuff together for the players. Is there a limited amount of time that you've got with the players? And as you say, you know, you can you can have paralysis by analysis in terms, of, you know, how much you can throw at players and, and video clips and, and the huddle, etc. You know, how much do you, do you think they can take on board? And and you know, and at League Two, what level or how much you no, well, you want to give them? Even at full time, you know, once you go past ten minutes of that, yeah. looking at the ceiling, and but you've also got to remember at part time, these lads have been working all day. The last thing they want to do is come in and watch a classroom. Me showing them fifteen minutes of clips, yeah, and then they're bored before they go to train. And so you have to get that balance. You know, you you, you, you there may be what we've started doing this year actually is a lot more individual clips. Mm-hmm. So all the players are. When, they pl- when we've played a game, the players can go on the next game day, if they just want to watch their own clips, they click their name on the video platform, every time they've touched the ball they can just go and watch it, so they don't need to actually go through the whole game, but maybe if I've watched the whole game back and I see that a certain player's made three or four mistakes or three or four things I can do better, just get in touch and say, listen, can you come in ten minutes early on Monday so that I can speak to you? So you have to watch, you know, sometimes you've got to do it, but we've found that, especially in the, in the pre-match analysis, getting towards the end of the week like so today rather than me being up there going through it with them mm-hmm. you just give them a wee bit of trust and, and you say to them right it's on huddle make sure you log on and then you maybe ask them about it on the Friday of that just to make sure that they've watched it you know so we find that's the best way because you've only really got them we get here at seven we do our lateral flows we start at quarter to eight and we're off the pitch at quarter past nine hour and a half if I didn't eat into that into video time Yep. It's less and less time on the pitch with yep. the players, so you've got to get the balance. Sometimes you've got to do it. You know, I think after the Albion Rovers game, for example, we had to have a video meeting. You know, so we had, we had to. You know, it would have been wrong of me as the manager not to point out things and that ate into our training time. But I felt it was the right thing to do. So you have to just get the balance because, as you say, it's, this isn't their main job. Um, they've all been working. A lot of them are tradesmen. Some of them are behind desks, maybe mentally tiring. Other one are on their feet, they're builders, they're joiners, they're electricians, whatever. They want to come here and have, they, yes, they want to work hard, but they want to have a wee bit of enjoyment as well. Eh? So you've got to get that balance, eh? no boring them where they're dry, jumping in the car going, Fuck, I've got to go to training now. Yeah. You know, because yeah. if you do that, then you're not going to get the best out of them on a Saturday. Talk Friday. about Saturdays and. Friday, and, I should say. <laughs> yeah, Fridays or Saturdays, but, you know, as a player, how did the weekend start with Gary Naismith? As a manager, how does the weekend start with Gary Smith? It's the same really. I, actually, I get more nervous as the manager. Um, and definitely as a defeat, you take it harder as a manager. I was quite hard as a player, but as a manager, um, you know, whether it's right or wrong, you know, we got beat for Albion Rovers just going back to that game. I had a day planned on the Saturday. Uh, I just cancelled it because I didn't think it was right to be going out when your team's been beat. How we were beat, you know, I just... I just didn't think think it was right, so you know it does affect you. Yeah. The defeats, especially. But uh, listen, it's a part time, but it's full time. Yeah. Any part time manager will tell you that it's full time. You know you, the, the things that you're dealing with, and as I said this year, I touched on it earlier. Is it's been really really difficult this year in terms of you wanting to work on stuff with the players. The amount of time, like tonight for example, we've only got twelve players training. Now there's a few that are only training because he which is wrapping them in cotton wool and they've uh-huh. done a lot because of the Andrew with the GPS and some have got knocks that we're just making sure they're fit for Friday and we didn't want them to get a knock on it again tonight but there's not much you can work on when you've got 12 players you know what I mean so yeah and that's been like that for the majority of the time you know that you know you, yeah. you know the people might say ah, he's moaning about injuries I'm not moaning about injuries everybody gets them yeah but we've had a lot of long-term injuries to key players and uh, and it can be very difficult to actually work on things that the team can improve on when you've not got the right amount of players to actually do it. But there's always a positive that comes out of that. The positive has been is that there's three or four of the under 20 stepped up. Correct. Would they have got a chance if everybody had been fit? Maybe not. But they've came up. Cammy quaite has been on the bench for the last seven or eight games. James Farrell's got on. Johnny Jarring started three or four games. Lucas Berry's been involved the last three or four games. So 
It's always a positive to take out a negative and the positive being is that we've been able to get some of the young lads up training with us more regularly and they've impressed in training that, that, that we felt comfortable to put them on the pitch. So, yeah. you know, it's fair play to them. There is a positive end to, to this discussion as well and I, I think we started about, you know, talking about a, a pre-match but we've just really opened up and, and talked about maybe football in general and, you know, we, we've finished the end of this month where John Robertson's been named the, the Cinch League 2 Player of the Month. Um, I remember back, you know, in, in the early times with him, you, you, were, you were very conscious not to rush him into the, the game, into the team. You know, he needed time to, to build up his fitness. How pleased are you now? No, listen, he, he, he's done great. You know, there's spoke to a lot of people about Robbo, really, because we, we signed him late. I spoke to a lot of people and, and everybody said the same thing to me. He's not a bad lad, but he can forget things or he can be late for the bus or... I've not really had a moment's trouble with him, to be honest. I maybe he forgets his GPS vest or something every now and then, but I think what he's appreciated, probably the first time in his career where he's actually had a regular run of games. Mm -hmm. He's at a club where I think he knows that people value him and rate him, and he's responding to that. If you want, you know, just a club that's putting his, their arm around about him and for him to feel that he's wanted. And I think that's, that's it. Listen, there's still loads that he can improve on, you know, he's... Uh, but that that you were on about his fitness, you know, he missed a bit. Of, he had missed a bit of pre-season. He came into us late, and the thing about Rob was when we get the GPS, his sprint distances are through the chat. Mm -hmm. So he's probably the highest nearly every game. Yep. About his sprint distances, so he's got to try and get him to try and um, sort of pace his game out because he just goes at it the yeah. full, and then he sort of dips towards the end of the game because he, mm -hmm. he gives it that much. But he, it's because his sprinting distances are off the chat. And there's times we've got to learn to him when he's got to pass it, when he can dribble, because teams are now getting used to him and they're doubling up against him and yeah. stuff like that, you know. So that's part of his education and part of my job as a manager to work on him with that. But listen, he, he's got the, the League Two play of a month. I think the last three or four games, five games, he scored three or four goals, set a couple up. So, you know, if you're looking at st statistics, it's well deserved. Um, I think he's fitted into well at the club. I think some of the older lads like Danny and that can keep him in check a wee bit. Um, but I, know, I think it's just it's just a boy that's enjoying playing really I think I don't know the last time he's maybe played seven or eight or nine games in a row and he is only 20 years old ah, he's just a baby that, uh, we've got a really young team and that's what I was getting back to you about was with Callum and Lee Hamilton and Robbie McIntyre uh, Danny Jardin's a little bit younger than them but he, I kept him to build the team round about the them you know Danny and Uzi kept that six or seven to try and add round about it and yeah. when you've not got that spine you know we've, we've lost our whole left hand for me Lost the best left hand side in the league. You know what I mean? Callum, Robbie. Yeah. Um, uh, and when somebody just takes that away for you <laughs> for a prolonged period of time, it's difficult to replace. And you know, the lads that have came in, right backs have went in, Scott Ricky, Johnny Jarrins went in, Kieran Bryan's played there, Danny's went and played a lot of games in the left and midfield, Jinky's played out there. So everybody's had to fill in, you know, but there's no. <laughs> There's no denying it. You miss players like Callum and Robbie, you know, the natural left footers in the team give you a nice balance. They know what I want as the manager, they've been at the club, they know what's expected of the club. So, um, you know, I would say we've done all right so far. With everything that's gone on in the background, I think we've done okay. Of course, we could have done better in certain games. But I think hopefully this interview just opens up a wee bit to, to some of the things that we've been going through as a club because. I didn't really like using excuses, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's no excuses, but they're facts. They're facts that um, injuries have really, really hit us hard this season, like really hit us hard. Um, but the lads have got us into an okay position, and we're now coming into a real run of games that can, can sort of push us into that top two or three, you know, with, yeah. we've got Annan, who I think are fifth, Stenhouse Muir, who are sixth, and Forfer, who are second. So if you want, you know, the next three games, mm -hmm. we can sort of determine where we want to be um, before we play Cowdenbeath in the last game before uh, the turn of the year. Are you a fan of the January window? It's coming up. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to get players in. You know, you, you're, I, I've been doing that. You know, I've been running the senior clubs. Who's available? Who are they thinking about putting out? As a clubs in our league that are looking to freshen people up. People are inquiring about my players. That all goes on behind the scene, you know, but what we want to do is if we're going to bring two or three in, we'd like to try and bring them in right at the start. It doesn't always work like that, you know, because we're on about the senior clubs, for example, they're going away three-week break, inevitably most of them go away 
most of them go away for a winter break, so they go away for a week of that, and in the main they take a lot of the younger lads with them, because they want to take a squad of maybe 20, 22, 24, so that they can have some practice matches and that, yep. so sometimes you end up waiting on them getting back, and then they play that first game in the cup, and then it's like the last week of the window, they say, right, now they're available, mm-hmm. so through choice, like everybody, you'd want them in on the 1st of January, um, but for me, you know, not just that, obviously we need to, we're always looking to get, make the squad better, but it'd be good to when we get, you know, Robbie's got to be a wee bit away, but sometime in January I'm expecting Callum back. I'm expecting Lee back sometime in January, so that'll be like two new signings for me. Yeah. Danny Jardin's expected to be back for the fourth for game. That'll be like a new signing for me. So as well as looking to try and improve the squad, the squad will get improved when these players come back, because they're good players. Um, and that'll be like having three new signings alone when they three return to action. And finally, uh, just reading today that um, Josh Campbell got a, you know an extension to his contract. He's at Hibs till twenty twenty five. You got to be delighted for him. And, and how you know how, how did you see him at Edinburgh City? No, listen, I didn't. Listen, James is, deserves the credit for bringing him to Edinburgh City. You know, I came in, he was already here. I just worked with him. You know what? Uh, he, Josh's biggest attribute is got uh, terrific energy. You know, when I first came in, I played him like in that number ten behind Doozy. The reason being is I knew that he would run past Doozy and he could get back because his energy was, was you know, it, it was, he just didn't seem to tire. Yeah. You know, and I know James had played him in different positions and he could fill in and he could play, I think James played him at defence some games when he was shorty players in wide midfield. and So we never knew what was really going to happen. I think even if you asked Hibs in the summer, they were unsure what was going to happen. But he's obviously went away in the summer, knuckled down, got himself fit. He's impressed Jack. He's impressed Jack. And, and I'll be honest with you, the, the chairman laughed at me the other day because he got he, he had our games at the start of the season, then he sort of went out the picture, and I don't know if he had an injury, I never really looked into it, I don't know if he had COVID, he's actually one that I had on the list to inquire about because <laughs> because he, he, had, yeah. he had sort of fell away, I don't know if he'd been injured or had COVID or what, but he was out the Hibs picture, yeah. and you thought, well if you never ask, you never get, and then all of a sudden, out the blue, he comes in the semi-final, mm-hmm. and then I, th- I think i seen him, he played the next game up at St Johnston as well, and he's maybe in link to start tonight as well against, so delighted for him, that, and that's what we, that's a selling point for us when we're going to get players, Yeah, you know what I mean, they need to see that they come to Edinburgh City, a club that looks after them, it doesn't matter if I'm the manager, James is the manager, that's irrelevant, we can help them little bits, but they're at a club that looks after them the right way, they get treated properly for a part-time club, and I think that can help the club moving forward. Yeah. That um, clubs look and go, ah, well, he went there and now he's playing in their yeah. first team. I wonder if we should send our young players there. So it can only help the club when we bring a player in on, he's a, before, long before my time, but Porteous at Hibs as well, yeah. you know what I mean? He was here, now he's playing in the Hibs first team. So there's a couple Hibs just now that, you know, they'll be grateful to Edinburgh City. Listen, Edinburgh City are grateful to Hibs for giving them the play, players in the first place. But Edinburgh City have returned the favour for maybe bringing in boys and sending them back men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think it works both ways. It's, it's, it's proof that the, the loan system works. You know, I was very fortunate. East Fife, the best example I had was probably Jason Kerr. Took him as a youngster at East Fife, done great. Then I took him to Queen of the South and the next again, two seasons later as a captain of St Johnston. He's lifting both the cups. He's got yeah. to go down in history. St Johnston legend. I don't think that'll ever be repeated again. In my lifetime, that St Johnston captain, I lifted two cups in the same season. So it can work. Yeah. You know, so you, it's, our job as a manager is just to make sure that you try and get the right loan signings into the club. And uh, we have, we've done all right with Hibs, you know, and this has came in as well. We've got Ryan Shanley, who was at Hibs as well just now. So there's definitely been a wee bit of a, a bond forged there between Hibs and, and Edinburgh City over the years. Yeah. Gary, I think probably we, we thought it might have been a, a shorter period of time that we're going to do and talk, talk tonight, but look, it's, it's went on. I don't mind it. I was, it was great asking you questions. You know, your answers just give us a bigger insight into what's happening. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, team as you know yourself, it's full, it's a, as I say, it, it's a full-time job, eh? And uh, everybody's committed to the club, and uh, we just need to all stick together, get our injured players back, tr- uh, try and get the squad healthier, and really look to push on in the second part of the season, you know, and get as close to Kelty as we can. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. All right.